Hey, it's Matt. I'm back with another transparent watercolor. This time I brought in some pen and ink too. Um, this is a violet back starling done on 10 by 7 inch paper. I got photos for this guy down at the Toledo Zoo and I had decent photos. They weren't fantastic. So I decided to do this one in pen and ink and watercolor because uh, it's a little bit faster and a little less reliant on having infinite detail in your uh, reference material. So once I had my sketch done, I transferred the, that over to the watercolor paper and frisked it off my bird. And I added a tint of some just a little bit of blue kind of colors to it, purpley blue. Hit that with the hair dryer. And then working outside my comfort zone, I uh, decided I was going to kind of put some bold uh, slashes of color through this. Typically, I think through everything and plan very carefully. And so doing a watercolor where it's uh, loose and splashy and a little bit not as controlled is outside my usual comfort zone. So I, uh, it, it, this was uh, a little different for me. And so I knew that my bird was gonna be pinkish Kind of, they call it the plum colored uh, or violet back starling. And uh, so I'm going to have some of those pinky tones in the middle. So I wanted to have a background that had a lot of cool colors to go in there to really pop the bird off the page. Once I had the base colors down, I started going about kind of spritzing some of these other colors in and flicking it with the paintbrush. My thought with this was to you keep it energetic and make it look lively. The bird's perched, it's not in flight or anything, but we've got a, a composition which has uh, uh, some diagonals, so that's gonna make it a little bit more energetic, but I thought that by kind of throwing in these other elements that are a little bit more random and have a little bit more energy to them, like the dripped paint, would end up building something a little more dynamic. And in the process of doing this, I was thinking about what colors are going to be in the shadow areas and on the birds. So I was bringing in some of these purpley and pink colors as well as I'm kind of shooting it all across there. And although this was um, a splashy sort of painting, I was trying to think about where the major colors are going and what's going to happen with my bird and the branch in the end. So I was kind of, although random, I was trying to set it up where I'm going to have the darks around the bird and I'm going to have some of those cooler tones around the bird to really get it to pop and yet have some of those pink tones off to the side where it's still going to make it look like it belongs in that area. So once I was happy with the background, I just peeled off that frisket and got to the white of the page uh, so I could transfer the drawing. So I transferred the drawing using tracing paper and uh, a folding bone, and this left with me with a nice uh, a nice uh, sketch to go by. I did blow it on this because my uh, recorder wasn't uh, didn't didn't get a good uh, read on some of the files, so it hops ahead to where I have the first passes of color in on the bird and the branch. So forgive me. And once I had those first colors established, I went about um, inking the drawing. And so for this, I used a croquill pen and uh, waterproof ink. And croquill pen, pens are great in that they allow you to use a variety of thicknesses of line and you can change that as you're drawing and that gives you a lot of a lot of implication of thickness to things. So by the way you ink it if you have a thicker line that implies you've got a shadow and you know if it's thinner it may imply something else. So as you do this you build up a, uh, a lot of detail very quickly that you don't have to render in watercolor. 
So it shortcuts a lot of the work you'd normally have to do. And you can... A, a beauty of that is that you can work really quickly. And another thing that's nice about it is, is that since you're working quickly, it, it seems to, at least for me, it invites me to use bolder colors. And uh, that can make for a more fun painting. And, you know, if you're doing a... Uh, since I'm painting these for me, not for a uh, strict illustration where it's being done for a field guide or something like that, I, uh, I'm i not really concerned that, you know, I'm concerned with the overall color reading correctly, that this looks like the plum-colored or violet back starling, but I'm not worried that someone will go up and say that, oh, that's a little bit too pink or that's a little too purple. You know, in the end, if it looks right, I'm happy. Um, and I think you can be more painterly with it and a little less literal with the color. And in the end, it looks right, but it's just a lot more fun to uh, paint and to look at. It's more interesting if you bring in some of these, you know, greens and blues in the shadows, maybe some purples. And, um, you know, if you were doing a field guide, you, the person you're doing it with, the uh, you know, the uh, art director would say something like, well, the bird's tail isn't... You know, the the back end of the bird is in blue under there. It's like, well, they, you know, they, they want that rendered in grays, even though it's, you know, well, they're white feathers, but the reflected, you know, light that's down there could be any color almost, depending what its environment is. So, you know, if you use some bright blues and purples, it'll look more interesting than if you're just painting it gray. Um, so not literal color, and with these, they... Uh, it can be much more adventurous. I think with this one, one of my favorite parts was the branch because you had all these you know bright orangey colors that worked so well against the uh, against those purpley pink backgrounds and you know those cool colors and the versus the hot really popped them off the page. Now it's also fun to bring in some of those blues into the shadow areas of the branch and the bird. And I think in the end they all look like they work together, um, but they uh, it's a little more adventurous with the colors. So most of the work early on was done with the number six, and later on these are all number two round brushes. And again, the pen and ink does a lot of the sharpening work so you can work very quickly with the watercolor. And late in the painting, I just hit a couple of areas with super dark the, with the uh, pen and ink to line the bird a bit. So there you go, uh, pen and ink and watercolor of a violet back starling. Thanks for watching. If you get a chance, have a peek at the blog or leave a comment.